What you're about to see is a handful of my favorite Ford features. First off is an amazing concept vehicle called Big Red. Secondly is a Fox Body DIY project codenamed Blue Thunder. And lastly is an offbeat look at a Ford F-150 Police Responder Edition. But first, here's Big Red. Meet Big Red. Big Red was an experimental gas turbine powered super truck intended for the 1970s. It was conceived and computer designed by Ford Motor Company engineers and traveled from coast to coast testing its adaptability to the highways. It was amazing. Big Red was on display at the 1964 World's Fair and at many auto shows. Basically, wherever the opinions and suggestions of truck drivers and operators could be sampled by Ford. The cab of Big Red was 13 feet high and was level and closely coupled to its trailer. The rear of the cab was concaved to maintain clearance on curves. The overall length of the tractor and twin trailers was a whopping 96 feet. Now, a small turbine engine was designed by Henry Ford and two associates way back in 1925. And since that time, Ford engineers had been quite interested in the potential of gas turbine power. In a turbine laboratory with the aid of computers and testing devices of the era, the most advanced engines and components were evaluated as part of a gas turbine development program. The experimental 705 engine, as it was called, was the beating heart of Big Red. It was designed and carefully built by Ford's company engineers under a contract with the United States Navy on a joint Army-Navy program as an all-gas turbine power plant. Now, the engine developed 600 horsepower and was capable of 24-hour sustained operation. The engine provided Big Red with a cruising speed of a respectable 70 miles per hour and a non-stop range of more than 600 miles. A unique supercharged cycle contributed to the 705's high efficiency. Two compression stages and exhaust gases were used to preheat air entering the primary burner. The weight to power ratio was roughly about one third of diesel engines of comparable horsepower. Now the engine made very little noise was almost vibration free. Its exhaust was clean and could burn a wide range of fuels. The brave crew of this super truck entered the cab through a door opened by air cylinders using a ladder that was lowered automatically. Pretty cool. The cab was spacious and the seats were adjustable. Now get this, a freestanding console contained the basic controls and powered assistance took most of the work out of driving. The turbine controls were located on the windshield header. At the rear of the cab was an express truck route map of the United States. A wash sink and concealed toilet were on board. A small refrigerator and beverage dispenser were also integrated in the cab, as was a warming oven. The driver and co-driver of Big Red were given a commanding view of the highway through a large tinted windshield. The cab also had dual heating and cooling systems. The co-driver even had a fold-away table. A personal television set was viewable only from the co-driver's seat and couldn't be seen by the driver. The co-driver's seat could recline for resting. Big Red was designed to move slowly on the road with a very comfortable ride. Big Red was also aerodynamic, some 30% better than trucks of traditional design of the era. The goal? was improved in fuel economy. The cab had a separate suspension that floated independently from the tractor chassis helping the ride. So whatever happened to Big Red? Ford scientists used Big Red's attributes to inspire future truck designs. Now Big Red ended up in the hands of the Holman Moody racing team in 1970 and today Big Red's whereabouts are unknown but I bet somebody knows where it is.
Here's to the innovative and fascinating Big Red. Let's face it, there is no shortage of love for the Ford Mustang. The numbers don't lie, this we know. But if you dig a bit deeper into the culture of this iconic pony car, you'll learn that the Fox Body fan base just keeps getting stronger. Road Noise recently caught up with professional racer Stephen Cox. Along with help from his sponsors, he has embarked on his very own Fox Body adventure. Mustang Fox Body fans, this story is for you. Go ahead, Stephen. Hey everybody, Stephen Cox here, and a big thanks to Road Noise for coming out to the Sopwith Motorsports Racing Garage in Central Indiana. I want to introduce you to my best friend since 1982. Blue Thunder is a 1980 Ford Mustang. This is one of the early Foxes. Now, the Foxes are kind of divided up into the four-eyed cars from 1979 through the mid-1980s, and then from 86, 87 on, they were referred to as the Aero cars. So this is one of the early four-eyed Foxes, and I have had this car since I was a kid, barely old enough to drive at all. And I'm gonna start at the front of the car and just introduce you to everything that we're doing. Now, this is an unfinished restoration. So you guys out there, that are thinking, man, is it possible to rebuild a Fox body stage by stage? Well, I got some good news for you. It is possible, and I'm gonna show you how it's done. We will start under the hood. Looks serious. This is serious. Uh, McGonagall Engines of Muncie, Indiana provided my stock car engines from 2012 through about 2016 in the Super Cup stock car series. and. I went to Dwayne McGonagall and said, what can you do with my Mustang? And he said, well, tell me what you want. What would you like, six or 700 horsepower? And I laughed and I said, Dwayne, after I hit Mach 4, what am I gonna do with the other 200 horses? I said, make it a 400 horsepower engine or more. So this dynos at exactly 407 horsepower. Now it was extremely important to me that we remain true blue Mustang. So this is a Windsor 302 block that has been punched out to 347. It puts out exactly 407 horsepower and 442 pound feet of torque. And for a 2,900 pound car, this thing will go. Now the cooling system was actually a problem and I went to uh, Matt Lazayek at National Parts Depot and I said, I cannot keep this thing cool in the summers. I have all this horsepower and I can't keep it cool. So National Parts Depot hooked me up with cold case radiators. And this is a brand new cold case system right here. It is a twin fan electric system. And since the day this was put in, this engine has run cool as a cucumber. It is absolutely beautiful. So uh, that's most of what we have under the hood. You can see the uh, aftermarket um, uh, exhaust headers. Those go into a custom dual exhaust system with Flowtech mufflers, and it just sounds like muscle cars should sound. One thing I absolutely love is the fact that we went with chrome pony wheels. Now again, these would have been on the later Fox bodies. So I have mixed up years, but like the engine, everything we have on this car is true blue Mustang. Those are chrome five spoke pony wheels and we upgraded to Continental Extreme Contact Sport Tires, thanks to Matt Peterson of uh, Braunschweig Racing. And he recommended this, this marriage. And so that's what we put on the car. That's an aftermarket setup that is off of a 1990 Mustang GT. So you have four wheel disc brakes, which this car did not come with. It came with drums in the back. And it is off of a GT, so you have increased braking power. And those brakes were designed for a GT in the early 90s. And that means it was a car that weighed three or 400 pounds more than this. So I have more than enough braking power for this little four-eyed Fox. So what about underneath the car? 
Well, actually, underneath the car, we've got a lot going on because the Fox bodies were notoriously sloppy. They had a lot of flex. So I called National Parts Depot, explained the problem to them. They hooked me up with Stifler's Engineering out of Mooresville, Indiana. Stifler's Engineering has created this special chassis stiffening system specifically for Fox Body Mustangs, and it has absolutely transformed this car. So there's a dog barking in the background. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you Fox Body guys know that uh, these Foxes are kind of like a Lego kit. You can put them together a stage at a time. So uh, especially you Fox Body guys will understand. This is a 42-year-old car with a quarter of a million miles, and the interior is all original. The interior does have one new part that I am really proud of. That is the most beautiful custom oh. leather steering wheel from Steering Wheel Art that I have ever seen. And it's all brand new, and Adrian at Steering Wheel Art customizes it to the exact shade that you want. He uses only German and Italian leather. I mean, it's just over the top great. The center cap, though, that is a 42-year-old busted center cap. So you guys see me on TV all the time talking about stable brand, fuel stabilizer, and 303 products. I just want you to know that right now we're in my garage. This is what I actually use. They are both great products and they work. So the point is, Fox Body guys, if you don't have 50 grand and a year to spare to send your car to a restoration specialist, you can do this. You can do it stage by stage and piece by piece. Fox Body guys, you got this. Okay, one more thing, the bonus round, and here are your potential prizes. An Indy 500 bleacher pad, new with tag, an AJ Foyt bobblehead, or an Isky Cams patch. Here's the question. Who won the 1965 Indianapolis 500? Go. Okay, I got this. It was Team Lotus. The driver was uh, Clark. Clark, Jim Clark. Jim Clark won, but AJ Foyt won the pole. I want the A.J. Foyt bobblehead. Well, guess what? what? You don't get the A.J. Foyt bobblehead. <laughs> you get the Isky Cams patch. Thank you all. Take it. Okay, good job, buddy. So what are we looking at here? This is my new police vehicle. It's a 2022 Ford F-150 Police Responder Edition. Let's take a little tour of it and I'll make you look good. Hell, you better make me look good. I know what you drive. Start now or you wanna wait? Let's, uh, let's go to breakfast first, but no donuts. <laughs> Looking at a 3.5 liter V6 twin turbo EcoBoost. And what kind of power? So I've seen them anywhere from 395 to 450 horse. We'll just leave it at that of what it could be. How many horsepower is this? She's one horsepower, but she's going to be hopefully one big one. How many horsepower is this? A little over 400. And I'm thinking about selling it. Whoa, it's got some pep in its step. Yes, it does. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, I'll show you around, just won't show you all the secrets. What's that? That's our microphone. We use that to communicate with dispatch and other officers on the road. And that's part of it there? And that's part of it there. And then you have your uh, your lights and siren control box. Yeah, that looks like, a, looks like a laptop. It's a laptop. So that's a tough book. And what we do is these cars are pretty much our office. So they're outfitted with printers, computers, everything. That's that thing up there. We just upgraded to the wind car video system, and um, we use that video information for court and is now monitored either video or audio. All right. That's a stalker radar unit, and um, the radars nowadays, when people say, well, if they surely didn't get me, I promise you we did. This little thing in the corner here. That's just simply the radar antenna. That's what sends out the signal and then it bounces back and goes into the computer system and mathematically reads out a speed. 
What's this thing? I, I tell you, I just like it. It's a little uh, extra that Ford threw in. A little America flag right there on the dash. Nice. I see it now. There's the stripes. What we got going on here? Well, they're not BB guns, but that's a Smith & Wesson M&P 223 rifle. And uh, all my men now carry those on duty. And then, of course, a 12 gauge. And they're set up for like quick grab or like they're secured yeah, they're in They're secured in case of break in, but uh, we can get them pretty easily and if we need them in a situation. And what's this little remote control? So the remote controls for the stalker unit. So it's a wireless system for the radar. Lots of lights splashed around. Is there any kind of rhyme or reason or you just put them everywhere? No, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of thought goes into where we put the lights on a police car. If we don't have the correct lighting, we become a traffic hazard. So pulling into intersections, we want to be visible from all directions. So you put them on the step there? We hit them. Uh, this, of course, is an undercover vehicle. So we had to find the nooks and crannies to hide the lights. And uh, we ran them along the running board. Probably up front. We have them up front in the upper windshield and down on the push bumper. Absolutely. We're getting ready to install some new ones on the sides of the push bumper. What do you mean on the side? Well, as you move into an intersection, I want to put my nose out slowly to get people's attention and then be able to proceed safely. Okay. So we're getting ready to install some extras right there. I got you. Front. Do some wheel well lights. Not there yet, but you're getting those. Yep. And in the back. And then the back again, just visibility if we're out on the interstate or on a traffic stop so people see us. We put lights high and low, whether you're in a truck or a small, small car, subcompact. See it from everywhere. And you got special badging. Got the police responder badging from Ford and, and uh, of course, O.C. Welch, where we bought the cars. Oh, O.C. Welch is the guy who sold them to you. Yep, he's the dealer in uh, South Carolina. That's, a, that's pretty much the only thing on the outside of this that lets you know it's a police car until the lights come on. We went and rinsed off the truck and then we're doing this video. They just turned all white. Yeah, those are what we call takedown lights or scene lights. So on a traffic stop, we can go to all white uh, for our safety. Hey, before you leave, I'd like to show you this. I was saying earlier, our squad cars are like small offices, so storage is always a problem. But with the deck system, we were able to uh, get a lot more storage from a lot more equipment that's necessary to do our jobs. So, for example, stop sticks. Yep which are for tire deflation mm -hmm. for in a pursuit situation and additional ballistic protection mm -hmm. for rifle rounds. The helmet back there. Helmet, ballistic protection. Yeah, yeah. And Sorry. then first aid and uh, water rescue ropes. We've used those here in our town. So we're, we're, uh, we're a very equipped department. A rifle up there. Just another rifle that we keep. And, um, it looks like a sledgehammer. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, that's what I like to call the key to the city. We like to think we're equipped and ready to go at a moment's notice. Road Noise would like to thank the city of Pendleton, Indiana, the men and women in blue, ponies, pony cars, and sirens. <laughs>